Hi, ladies and gentlemen, we continue with Chapter 8 today, Quadratic Functions and Equations, and we're moving into 8.2, which is Characteristics of Quadratic Functions. And our goals today are to find the zeros of a quadratic function and find the axis of symmetry and the vertex of a parabola. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is not actually in your notes. So just put down your pencils and relax for a second. Um, Back in chapter three and four, we started graphing lines. And originally, we didn't, we didn't know y equals mx plus b, so we plotted points. And then we taught you how to um, graph an equation using the x and y intercepts. When we did that, we did this thing where we, to switch over here again, where we did one of these t-charts and we plugged in zero for X and we plugged in zero for Y and we figured out, that's a question mark, really badly drawn question mark. And we used intercepts to figure out how to graph it. Um, and so we found out that the Y intercept was down here at negative one and the X intercept was at two. So we found out that we had zero comma, um, that wrong. Um, zero comma negative one and two comma zero and those were our intercepts. Well uh, today we're going to put a special name on our x-intercept. So this point right here we're we're going to call it a zero because in all of higher math these points where a graph crosses the x-axis has some really important meanings to it. So we need to get familiar with this and we're going to start with parabolas, but you're going to find zeros of all kinds of functions in every other math class from here on out. So this point, this x-intercept is the zero. That's what we're talking about today. All right. So a zero of a function is the x value that makes the function equal to zero. When we plug in the x value, the y that comes out is a zero. We can think of the zeros as being the x-intercepts because they are the x-intercepts. Um, but x-intercepts is really long and zero is just nice and easy. So we're looking for the zeros for graphs. Graphically, the zero or zeros occur where the graph crosses the x-axis. All three of those things need to put, be put into your notes. All right, if you need a second, hit the space bar. Otherwise, let's keep going. So uh, a quadratic function can have one zero, two zeros, or no zeros. So this graph right here has one zero. It, the graph comes down and touches the x-axis at exactly one point. Cool. This one has two zeros. That's a two. And this is a z. Uh, and it's crossing the x-axis right here and right here. It's an interesting thing. Uh, when Mr. Lumpkins was talking to you about parabolas yesterday. He talked to you about parabolas that open up or down based on whether the a in ax squared plus bx plus c was positive or negative. So if I had a negative a, uh, I could have a parabola that touches the x-axis right here and opens down. It's a little easier to draw these neatly with uh, starting from the top. So I could have something that looks like that. I could have a parabola that opens down and crosses in two places. And this one doesn't have any zeros. See how the x-axis is down here and it's not crossing it at all? So this one has zero zeros, no zeros. But I could also have a parabola that opens down that also manages to never touch the x-axis. So your job is to put three graphs in your notes that correspond to one zero, two zeros, and no zeros. So this example says find the zeros of the quadratic function from its graph, and it also says to check your answer. So I've got a zero right here. Well, the ordered pair for that zero is negative one comma zero. And the ordered pair for this one over here is 1, 2, 3, comma, 0. And I think that these are my answers. I'm going to put a box around them, but who knows? I'm going to check. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be wrong. To check my answer, I'm going to take this original equation, and I'm going to plug the x value in and the y value in. Well, I'm going to plug in 0 for y and say 0 equals 
x squared. Well, I have to use parentheses, so I have negative 1 squared minus 2 times x, which is negative 1 minus 3. So I have 0 equals negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then minus 3. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So this one's good. Switch colors just to make this a little bit easier to read, and I'm going to check the second point the same way. I plug in 0 for the y value, and I plug in 3 for the x value. Minus 2 times 3 minus 3. So 0 equals 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 minus 3. And 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So this one also checks out, and I have checked both of my answers, and I feel confident that negative 1 comma 0 and 3 comma 0 are, in fact, the zeros of this quadratic function. This one only has one zero, which means less work in the checking process. So this is negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So I believe that our zero for this is negative 4 comma 0. And in order to check my work, I'm going to plug in 0 for y and negative 4 for x. Plus 8 times negative 4 plus 16. 0 equals negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. And I'm going to bring down that plus 16. 0 equals 16 minus 32 is negative 16. And negative 16 plus 16 is 0. So I know for certain that this is the correct answer. Um, by the way, if you ever have a graph where there are no zeros, unfortunately, there's not a way to check your work for that one because there's nothing to plug into the function. So that's that. All right, the axis of symmetry. This is a new phrase. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that divides a parabola into two symmetrical halves. That phrase needs to go into your notes. Two symmetrical halves. The axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex of the parabola. Good to know. And the axis of symmetry is an equation of a line written in the form of x equals some number. Some number. So go ahead and write it just like that in your notes because you need to know that it has to be x equals a number in order to get full credit. So what's an axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides the parabola into two symmetrical halves and it always passes through the vertex. Well, in this vertex, I'm going to eyeball this, but my vertex appears to be right here. So there's my vertex. Um, it looks like my vertex has an ordered pair of 1, 1. Well, my axis of symmetry is the vertical line that cuts through this graph right at the vertex. We draw in, yes, we do draw in axis of symmetries because it's how it helps us plot, actually, and it tells us a lot. So we draw it in as a dotted line. The dotted means, hey, this isn't really part of this graph. This is not represented in the equation. It's a tool for understanding the graph and knowing where the middle is and, and the whole symmetrical halves thing. What does that mean? Well, if I look at this distance from here to here, that looks like about one and a half units. Well, from here to here is about one and a half units as well. And then if I come up here, I'm not going to try to do a fancy bracket. One, two, whoa, almost three. Over here, one, two, almost three. Um, so you can see that both these lengths were exactly the same. So this right here is the same as this right here. Same as down here. And if I'm really good at this, and it's not going to do exactly what I want it to do, but I am going to carefully trace this, and I'm sorry that it's slow. I'm going to carefully trace this line, and I'm going to use the wonders of SmartBoard and flip this line around. Now, it doesn't flip it exactly the way I want it to, but I'm going to flip it left and right, and 
when I do that, <laughs> grab the wrong thing, uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to flip it left and right. And when I do that, <laughs> saw the gun, it's just being a pain in the neck. When I do that, you can see that I can slide this over and it's exactly the same on this side. So when I manage to get it done, if you could imagine, and this is hard to do, but if you could imagine, I could fold this. If this were written on a piece of paper, I could fold it at that dotted line, at that axis of symmetry, and you would see that the two parts of the graph line up perfectly. Okay, so let's move on. Um, the good news is we don't have to have a graph to know what the axis of symmetry is. In fact, more often than not, we're using the axis of symmetry to get a graph, not the other way around. So when we have a quadratic function in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, we can use the formula to determine the equation of the axis of symmetry. And that equation, and this needs to go into your notes, is x equals negative b over 2a. Let me read that again a little bit differently. x equals the opposite of b over 2 times a. The opposite of b. So if b is a positive number, the top of your fraction will be a negative number. If b is a negative number, the numerator of your fraction will be a positive number. Okay, so I have an example. So we're going to figure out the axis of symmetry for this. We're going to figure... Turn my head back on. So we're going to find the axis of symmetry. And this is how we abbreviate it, capital A, little o, capital S, axis of symmetry. So we want to find x equals negative b over 2a. And I'm going to take a second. I'm going to say a equals 2, b equals 4, and I don't need to know what c is. c is 5. I'm not going to write it down. In fact, you don't have to write this down. I'm just writing it down so you see where things are coming from. So my axis of symmetry is the opposite of b. b is positive 4, so the opposite of 4 is negative 4 over 2 times a, a is 2, so I'm going to have x equals negative 4 over 2 times 2 is 4, and you're never going to leave your answer like that. You're always going to simplify, reduce. We don't want unsimplified, unreduced fractions. So the axis of symmetry for this particular parabola is a equals negative 4 divided by positive 4 is negative 1. So on the last slide we said it's always in the form of x equals some number, so this some number is negative 1. So this is my axis of symmetry. All right, let's practice this again. <clears throat> and again, the axis of symmetry can be found by using x equals negative b over 2a. And let's see, a is equal to negative 3, and b is equal to negative 12. c is 9. I don't necessarily need that, so whoopsie daisy, um, so I don't need to write that down. So I'm going to say x equals negative b, well b is negative 12, over 2 times a, which is negative 3. So I just want to point out that the opposite of negative 12 is going to be positive 12. Okay? The opposite of negative 12 is positive 12 over Negative six. I'm going to take it back to hot pink again. Apparently I missed. Um, so my axis of symmetry is x equals 12 divided by negative six is negative two. So this is my axis of symmetry. All right. Well, the axis of symmetry is just a really handy tool for graphing. And the first thing that we use it for is finding the vertex. So because we know the axis of symmetry always passes through the vertex, once I know the axis of symmetry, I can use it to find the vertex. So remember, we're always looking at something that looks like this. So once I know what the axis of symmetry is, uh, I don't know what this is, I can take this value and I can plug it in here and here, and I can find out what the y value is. So I'm going to say that this is, I don't know, question mark, question mark. And then now that I know the y value, my vertex is an ordered pair of uh, 
is an ordered pair in the form of, I have no idea if this is the right color for that. All right, this doesn't make much sense. Let's cut our losses, move on to an actual example, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So we need to find the vertex. And the first thing that I need to do to find the vertex is find the axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry happens at x equals negative b over 2a. Well, b is 6, so negative 6 is uh, what we're going to put on the top of our fraction. Negative b over 2a. a is negative 3, so I'm going to do 2 times negative 3. So I have x equals negative 6 over negative 6. So my axis of symmetry happens at x equals positive 1. So far, so good. But that's not actually what we're looking for. So we're going to take this value of 1, and we're going to plug it in here and here. So y is equal to negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 7. All right, PEMDAS says we do powers and parentheses first. There's nothing to do inside the parentheses. 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 6 times 1 is positive 6 minus 7. And so negative 3 plus 6 is positive 3. Positive 3 minus 7 is negative 4. So that's the y value that the parabola crosses through. So that means that our vertex is the ordered pair. The x value comes first, and then the y value. There's our vertex. So just to recap, we started by finding the axis of symmetry. Once we found what the axis of symmetry was, we plugged that back into the original equation for the x's, and that generated the y value to say where the parabola crossed the axis of symmetry. All right, so we're going to do it again. I would love for you to pause the video and give this a try, especially if you're using a pencil. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. And here we go. So my step one is to find the axis of symmetry. And I'm going to do x equals negative b over 2a. b is negative 4. And a is, what's a? Well, there's nothing written there. If there's nothing written there, it's going to be a 1. So when I fill this stuff in, negative b is negative negative 4, the opposite of negative 4, times 2 times 1. So the top simplifies to be positive 4, and the bottom is just 2. So our axis of symmetry happens at x equals 2. Good. Great place to start. Now we're going to work on finding our vertex. So our vertex happens at y equals, well, I'm going to plug in x equals 2 into this. So I'm going to have 2 squared minus 4 times 2 minus 10. So I'm going to have y equals 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 minus 10. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 10 is negative 14. What we're looking for is the vertex. The vertex is always written as an ordered pair. Don't just leave it like this. You have to actually write this part over here. So the vertex happens at 2 comma negative 14. Has to have parentheses around it. There you go. All right, so just a reminder. Your vertex is always an ordered pair. Always has parentheses. X comma Y in parentheses. And the axis of symmetry is always an equation in the form of X equals some number. So if I find out that my axis of symmetry is X equals negative 3, then I would go plug that value of negative 3 into the original equation to generate a vertex that would be negative 3 comma, you know, who knows, 17. So the Vertex is in an ordered pair, and the axis of symmetry is an equation in the form of x equals some number. All right, in chapter 7, we said there were no application problems. Chapter 8, on the other hand, is application problems of the loser. So this one says, the height and feet above the ground of an arrow after it is shot can be modeled by y equals negative 16t squared plus 63t plus 4. 
can the arrow pass over the tree that is 68 feet tall? Okay, so the height in feet can be modeled by all of this. So that means our y value is the height of the arrow. In this problem, we're not using x, we're using y, and t is, it doesn't say it, but this is a physics problem, and I know that t is, um, in this particular case, is the time in seconds. Okay. The question is, can the arrow pass over a tree that is 68 feet tall? So let's come up here and get ourselves um, a nice, lovely shade of brown, and oopsie. Okay, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw myself a tree and it's springtime and I want some nice, lovely foliage on my tree and maybe there's a blue jay in it. There's a blue jay, who knows? Maybe there's a cardinal in it. Oh, cardinal's not purple. I don't know what that is. Uh, anyway, who cares? Uh, my tree is 68 feet tall. And over here, Billy Bob is shooting an arrow, and we want to know, this arrow, is it going to go high enough go over that tree? And kind of like, this is a terrible quick sketch, but this kind of looks like a parabola. In fact, I look over here, and with what you learned with Mr. Lumpkins last time, where it's is it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c? It sure is. So this is a quadratic equation. This is a parabola, which means that somewhere in here, if I really took the time to draw a really nice sketch, I would have a vertex. And the vertex would be the highest point. So that little point right there is the vertex. And it's at t comma y. And t is the time in seconds. And y is the feet. So I guess what I want to figure out is, what is the vertex of this? Because if the vertex is more than 68 feet, then the arrow is going to clear it. If the vertex happens lower than 68, 67, 65, 48, who knows, it's not going to clear the tree. So I think that we need to start by finding the axis of symmetry. So we'll get started by doing the axis of symmetry. And that happens at x equals negative b over 2a. And I just want to bring down here that our original function is y equals negative 16 t squared plus 63 plus 4. So let's go grab some things. Let's see. A is equal to negative 16, and B is equal to positive 63. So we have X equals the opposite of B, negative 63, over 2 times A, which is negative 16. So we get X equals negative 63 over negative 32, because 2 times negative 16 is negative 32. I don't know about you, but I can't do that in my head. So we're going to switch over to my handy dandy calculator and I'm going to type in negative 63 divided by negative 32 and I'm going to remember to hit the decimal so that I get a frac or excuse me a decimal answer. So when I do negative 63 divided by negative 32 I get 1.96875. Let's round that to the nearest hundredth place. So that 8 is going to make this become a 7. So 1.97 is what we get for our axis of symmetry. So x equals 1.97. All right, we don't necessarily like this. And by the way, welcome, because all the work that we've been doing all this year is to get you to this point where you start doing big boy and big girl mathematics. And this is where things get exciting. So our numbers might be a little bit hairier. We're going to try to keep them nice, but sometimes we're going to end up with some decimal points that we have to deal with. Okay, so I want to know what's the vertex. Well, once I find this x value, I'm going to plug it into the original equation, and that's going to give me y equals negative 16 times t squared, 
And we just figured out that T was 1.97. Oh, this is supposed to have T there. Uh, plus 63T, which is 1.97 plus 4. If I couldn't do this in my head, I certainly can't do this in my head. So we're going to go back to the calculator and we're going to plug this in. So we're going to type in. Um, I can't do that. We're going to type in negative 16 times, I'm going to open up a set of parentheses and do 1.97. And I'm going to come outside the set of parentheses and I'm going to hit the X squared button. And then from there, I'm going to do plus 63 times, well, our X value is 1.97. So I'm going to plug that in and then plus four. All right, and when I hit the enter button, that's going to tell me what the vert, the y value of the vertex is. So let's see, 66.0156. So I'm going to go ahead and round this to the nearest hundredth, just like we did the last one. So I'm going to take that five and cause that to round to from one to two. So our y value is 66.02. So y equals 66. Zero. So funky, sorry. Well, look here, I said that uh, Y was in feet. Oh my word. I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, y is in feet. So our vertex happens at uh, let's see, our vertex happens at 1.97 comma 66.02. And this right here is the time in seconds. So after, or just shy of two seconds, the arrow hits the highest point of its, of its path. And that happens at 66.02 feet. Well, if the tree is 67 feet, <laughs> or 68 feet, then the path of this arrow takes it right into the middle of the tree. So we're going to say, no, the highest the arrow gets is 66.02 feet. So it won't go over the tree. What happened to me, lady? All right, so that's it, ladies and gentlemen. You have some practice problems to do, and uh, pop into office hours. If you have questions, pop into office hours just to say hello. As it turns out, we kind of miss you. And by kind of, I mean, just period, we miss you. So we hope you're doing well. Thanks, everybody. Bye.